Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Here we are then. Last night I set a second anchor so that we would be bow into the waves. And it did work for a few hours. Um, and then it dragged. <laughs> So then for the rest of the night we were at the mercy of the wind and often we went beam onto the waves. They're not particularly big waves, it's just a big long lazy swell but it gets the boat rocking side to side quite a lot so it was, it was really uncomfortable wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we did like gym all night long. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, there were lots of noises from the boat bottles clanging about yeah. and stuff. And also there was a disco! There was a flipping <laughs> on, the, on the beach over there, there was a mental party thing. Yeah, they were full of energy and... Oh, really loud. Um, so yeah, we didn't get a particularly great night's sleep, another night of sleep deprivation. But today's a new day. We're just about to raise the mainsail. We're going to sail along the coast and today we don't have the wind dead against us in theory, according to the forecast. So it should be much more yeah. pleasant to sail along today. And we're really looking forward to that, aren't we? Yes. Is. Now I just need to tweak, tweak and improve so that we get some speed up. Well, isn't this nice? Seems like a different universe from yesterday. I'm managing to sail. We're um, eventually heading in that direction. We can just see the island over there, Palmaria, that's where we're heading to. And we're just passing Monte Rosso, which is one of the Cinque Terre. It's just behind that mountain there. And it's a beautiful, sunny, peaceful day. We're no longer fighting against the wind and wave, and it's just perfect. Rosella is even managing to get some rest, finally. Look 
the difference a day makes. 24 little hours. Hmm? It's better, isn't it? Yeah, really enjoyable. And we've not even had any complaints yet about being inclined, yeah, like inclined. <laughs> Brilliant. Fred's a bit noisy, isn't he? I might have to try and let him have a bit of rest. Inclined a little bit, but not too much. Yeah. Um, we're racing along for our standards. Heading in a great direction. It's really comfortable. Beautiful day. What more could you ask for in life? sailing and preparing our easy summer lunch. Right guys, the boat is driving itself. We've got just a mainsail up at the moment. Rosella is resting inside the boat. So now's my chance to do some fishing. Wish me luck. Shock absorber effect. This is a familiar cruising ground for us and you can see uh, Tinetta, which is a very small island and there's Tino, which is another island with a lighthouse on it then there's Palmaria, which is this one, which is quite a big island then there's a tiny little gap between Palmaria and Porto Venere which is where the church is you might be able to see that now, if not, we'll show you it shortly um, and that's where Rosella and I got married beautiful, it's really uh, special to us, of course and then just to the left of that there's a castle and um, this whole town, Porto Venere, in the past was kind of, uh, it was fortified against pirates. So the whole town, the walls and the castle were all one kind of contiguous um, encirclement to avoid people coming in and ravaging the town. Makes it very pretty. Change of plan. This is the uh, the small entrance that we usually use, nearly always, to get through back to our home cruising ground. But today it's a bit too lumpy. There's um, 
there's a shallow area in there that's uh, 2.2 meters our draft is 1.7 um, the shallow area is internal so we, we would probably be fine going through there but I just don't feel it's uh, I think the safest option is instead of going through here this tiny little gap we can go down down the south end of Palmaria and there's a much larger gap that's about 28 meters of depth down there so there won't be as much swell caused by the, uh, the raising seabed it'll be more comfortable and there's just a bit more leeway if anything were to go wrong then it gives us more of a chance of getting out of it without um, getting into trouble so that's what we're going to do here we go no luck with the fishing we've come down to the southern end of palmaria and now we've got the gap this is the one we're going to be going through and as you can see it's a lot wider it's deeper too and there's a lot more room for manoeuvre just you know certain things you're asking for trouble if you can avoid them and you don't so that's why we're going in this way we'll make it a little bit of a longer journey for us but once we get round the back of the island this uh, the rough water will be gone it'll be really peaceful and, uh, and very beautiful so looking forward to getting through and around the back the bay of La Spezia is and always has been an important naval base and lots of these islands and places around here are fortified have been fortified in the past by various militaries so you can see i don't know if you can see actually but hopefully you can see in the video in the background there on tina there are lots of caves and bunkers and dugout areas and it would be really really i love things like that i'd love to go exploring digging around and searching the old tunnels and stuff you're not allowed to because it's a military island but i'd still like to do it there is a knoll over there, the rock that goes to the other side. I don't know if you can see it. Over there. expecting you get wind gusts coming down from the hillsides around here and if you've got your sails out <laughs> it can catch you out off guard in the foreground that uh, construction you can see is called Corret Guala and that was a, that's another defensive battery that would have had cannon on it in the past and then in the background you can see a huge catch how many feet that is but it's absolutely gigantic there's a lots of um, different boats that you see around here from cruise ships uh, military ships submarines optimists there's just a mixture of everything it makes it a really interesting place to sail in the background there you can see the church and the gap and that's where we would have passed had we not chosen the safer route
What have we got here then, darling? Fikid India. I don't know what you call these in English. I will find out for you and I'll put it on as a subtitle. But you can pick these off, these fruits, and you have to be careful not to stab yourself because they're very spiky. But they're edible and they're very tasty, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm. And then here, just through next to the swimming pool, this tree is lemons, isn't it? Lemon and oranges are. It's really beautiful when they're in season, there's lots and lots yeah. and lots. Now they're all green. Yeah. Beautiful. Maybe it is oranges. Yeah. Yeah, the, this is oranges and the other one is lemons. One thing I really like about Liguria is they are what the Italians call a little bit casinisti, which means they're a bit kind of messy. They're not too bothered about how tidy everything is. You know, sometimes a beautiful garden like that, and then you know, you'll find like trailers and motorbikes and things just kind of hidden in the corner of a beautiful garden. And you think, you know, could you not? Maybe make that a little bit more tidy, but then again, I like it. They're just chilled, you know. They live here. They're happy to, uh, you know, to just randomly park their boat at the bottom of the garden. And what's wrong with that? We're actually quite new to this vlogging in public thing, so yeah. this is pretty much the worst time, the worst, the first time that we're walking past people in public speaking to the camera and uh, it's something we're gonna have to get used to I guess yeah but it's a little bit strange isn't it at first yeah. anyway we nearly arrived in town If you walk along this very steep path, you can just see some people up there now. That's a, uh, a pathway that leads to an old Roman villa. And this area has obviously been occupied since Roman times. And actually, along the church there, there's a terraced area with olive trees on it. I'll show you that. And it looks basically fixed in time. It's almost like going back in time when you see it. I really like it. I think someone's just jumped in the sea. Here's the church and throughout the day you can hear the uh, church bells chiming from there all across the bay and there's a group of people here congregated young and old and it looks as though they've um, been and got some chips from the town centre and we're all just sitting here relaxing and eating them chips actually that's just made me hungry thinking about chips yeah they smell they do smell yeah. good too mm. Yeah. 
Se fossimo alti e qualcuno vuole reclamare, va al bar, prende due bicchieri di vino, ce li porta e noi abbassiamo immediatamente. I've said this before in another video, but Italy is a very, very kid-friendly country. What time is it now? Okay, it's half past nine, so it's not that late. But just look around and look at the kids that are surrounding us and how family friendly this place is. In the tree by the book that was no I don't know I don't know what it's like in the United States for example, but in the UK this time of night all the kids would be tucked up in bed. So it's really nice to have the kids out and about with people and dancing around and actually there are kids here working <laughs> carrying the trays obviously because they want to not because they're paid or because they're being forced to but it's, it's really nice that kids are a part of that the adult world this is like not for charity but it's like for a school yeah. this, this, this kind of event is to raise money for the local football team, I believe, isn't it? That makes me want to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it raises money for local projects. Bold, sweet, bold. Barca, dolce, barca. <laughs> I'm about to make us a dessert stroke supper. And I just thought while I was in the fridge I might show you something. It's really simple, probably everybody's thought of this before, but if you haven't, we've got a fridge like this which has no compartments in it whatsoever. So all we've done is we bought these small containers. They're actually, I think, for carrying uh, clothes pegs, aren't they, in, yeah. in design. But basically you can organise your food within the fridge and then when you want to get something out, it makes it a little bit easier having things under control. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we like balance in our lives and the balance here is the Greek yogurt, which is healthy. It actually looks almost frozen there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We've got a really good fridge on this boat. It's, uh, it's very, very cold. It's a bit like an ice cream then. Yeah, almost. These are not the better plate, but... There we go. So now I've been... I've been told before this, I said I was gonna make this and Rossella said, don't exaggerate with the squirty cream because people think we're really unhealthy. But as I'm saying, you've got your Greek yogurt and then you just... I'm not gonna put that much. Oh my God. <laughs> there you go, look at that. <laughs> That's mine, you can do yours darling. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I know which one looks more restauranty, but I don't know. You guys tell us which one you prefer: <laughs> Rossella's dessert or my dessert? Well, they're gonna prefer yours because it's less boring. <laughs> That's not true. They might like elegance. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> simple, refined, feminine elegance, as opposed to silly, male dessertiness. Buon appetito! Thank you. Actually, I think we need some pupils. I'm afraid you're not going to be Banana Man tonight. That's really good. And do you know what? The Greek yogurt is good. It tones it down that little bit. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, which I don't, but it does actually taste very nice. <laughs>